I'm Mary Poppin with Imagineer Systems, and I'm going to show you a little bit about Mocomo Pro's Remove Tool. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, open this project again so I can start over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw a spline around the object I want to remove at first. So I am really pretty, like, not into roto. So what I want to do is I want Mocha to do the roto for me. So I'm going to draw my garbage shape, and I'm going to just go ahead and track through. And you'll notice the shape will follow the track along, it'll follow the skier because it's a fairly intelligent tracker. Even though it's not necessarily planar data that I'm following, it's still close enough for me to get a decent solve. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the end part of my, um, my roto shape here so that I get a nice uh, transition between the two areas. And you'll notice that it tweens over time between those two shapes and follows the track along. So I don't have to do a lot of work to get my garbage mat nice and, and done. So, okay, so I have my skier. I'm gonna go ahead and name him Skier. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna turn the track off. And I'm going to start tracking the background. Now, it doesn't matter how I define the skier in order to remove him. What does matter is the planar data that is moving behind the object because this is how Mocha automates the removal process for, for an auto clean plate. All right, so I'm gonna draw a big sloppy shape around here. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call it background. And I'm going to make sure that this layer is under the skier layer. And the reason I'm going to do that is because Mocha holds out objects that are above one another in the layer pile because Mocha treats objects at the top of the layer pile as closest to the camera and objects at the bottom of the layer pile as further from the camera. So this will not, this data will not contaminate this data back here. I'm going to go ahead and click perspective on for this ground because as you can see, the ground has some parallax going on, it's shifting. So I need to make sure perspective is on. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go over here to link to track and I'm going to link to none. And what that does is that does not move the spline along with my track anymore. Because you remember how this followed my track? I don't want this to follow the track. I want to just read the ground as it moves underneath like a scanner. So I'm going to go ahead and track forward. Actually, I want to do one more thing. I, as an artist, like to be able to see what's going on with the track. So I'm going to align the surface and grid tool to the ground in a rough way, just as a visual check for myself to see what the track is doing as I track. So I'm going to try tracking one more time. And if I'm doing it correctly, I should see the grid sliding really nice and evenly off the screen. If I'm doing it wrong, it'll wobble, pop, shift, and do other funky things that it shouldn't be doing. And this is how I know whether or not I have a good track without going in and starting to um, render, which takes a long time. You know, I mean, well, okay. Our render doesn't take that long, but when you render, in general, you want to be able to check your data before you start hitting the render button. So, all right. So let's scroll through and make sure that looks nice. I feel like it's a really good solve. So now I'm going to get to the magic part of our demo. I want to hear some oohs and ahs. So I'm going to click on the Remove tab. I'm going to turn my overlays off so that it looks extra impressive. I'm going to go ahead and render forward. Now if I've done everything right, my skier should just pop right out of the scene. So essentially what Mocha is doing is it's looking in the area around the skier that I have defined mm -hmm. and looking in the area that I have defined the skier and it's saying use none of that information, use only the information in the area around the skier, chop it up, put it back together and then warp it along with the planar track that we've made. So that's essentially what an artist does when they're doing a clean plate, but Mocha automates this process. So this doesn't work on every single shot that you have, it works on a lot of them. It only works when you have data moving behind an object or you can create a clean plate to move behind the object. What it will not work on is an animated background. So if you have an object moving over a crowd of cheerleaders, sort of like doing like this, it's not going to really give you a good solve. Um, or like, likewise, if you're moving over a fractal pattern like an ocean, you know, something like that, you're not going to get a very good solve. It's really better to clone over time for that sort of thing. But Mocha will solve for any plane that the object is moving over. Super. So, pretty cool. What's the website? The uh, website is www.imagineersystems.com, and we would love to have you visit. We have free tutorials, and you can download a 15-day trial of Mocha Pro.